Greetings and good morning. I'm Julia Shevin, Professor of Physical Therapy and Chair of the Department of Physical Therapy, and today's ringmaster. I will open our ceremony with a land acknowledgement statement. We acknowledge that Springfield College stands on the traditional homelands of the indigenous Algonquin people known as Agawam. The indigenous name for this place is a locative term that roughly translates to low-lying marshy lands, describing a large region along both sides of the Kinetequa, now called the Connecticut River, from present-day Enfield, Connecticut, to the Holyoke Range. The Agawam were closely related and diplomatically connected to the Quabog to the east, the Podunk to the south, the Orinoco to the west, and the Nanatuck, Kumtuck, and Sokoki to the north. We acknowledge the memory of these indigenous nations who after having inhabited this land for more than 10,000 years were displaced in the 1600s to 1700s by English colonial settlers. We acknowledge the surviving native nations of what is now called New England, the Nipmuc to the east, the Wampanoag and Narragansett to the southeast, the Mohegan, Pequot and Shaktakak to the south, the Mohican to the west and the Abenaki to the north among many others. We affirm, honor, and respect the sovereignty of these and hundreds of other American indigenous nations across America that survive today. Springfield College Department of Physical Therapy honors and respects the diverse indigenous peoples connected to this territory on which we gather. We take this opportunity to thank the original caretakers of this land. Now, it's my pleasure on behalf of our program to welcome each of you on the occasion of the hooding ceremony for the Doctor of Physical Therapy class of 2021. The 2021 cohort is about to become the 33rd class to receive a graduate degree in physical therapy from Springfield College. Today, this program and our guests honor these 34 almost physical therapists and mark their completion of the program by placing a hood over their shoulders that will be worn during their commencement exercises tomorrow. Graduates, there are a number of people who are here to acknowledge your achievement. Some are in person and many on the live stream. All of these guests have had a substantial and often unacknowledged role in your academic journey. It's fitting that we recognize that they honor you with their presence and that they themselves are honorees for all the work they've done to bring you here today. Let me introduce guests from our college community, many of whom are joining us from the live stream and some in person. On live stream, Dr. Mary Beth Cooper, president of Springfield College. On live stream, Dr. Martha Potvin, provost and vice president for academic affairs. On live stream, Dr. Mary Ann Coughlin, associate vice president for academic affairs. Uh, our Associate Director for Media Relations, Damon Markowitz, will be here in a moment. He's rushing from other graduate, he's here. Great. He's rushing from every possible ceremony for this graduation weekend to be here to honor you. Uh, Eric Toole from Library Services, our reference librarian and someone you worked closely with, has joined us. And uh, Dr. Brooke Howell, Dean of the School of Health Sciences, who sends her best and is joining us this morning by live stream. Graduates along, your, graduates, along your journey, you have had many teachers and mentors. Let me take this opportunity to tell your friends and families, the members of the department who served as your tour guides on that journey. We're joined today on the live stream by some of the adjunct faculty. Our adjunct faculty are clinical specialists and experts who divide their time and attention between teaching courses in our program and providing patient care at our clinical sites. We thank them for all that they've done to bring you here today. I'm really honored to introduce to your families, and you know them well, the dedicated people who I work with every day and who shepherded you through the program, the 10 core faculty of our department. And as I call them out, each one will stand and hopefully the camera will be able to capture them. Dr. Maureen Barrett, Dr. Sal Brooks, Dr. Angela Campbell, Dr. Aaron Futrell, Dr. Regina Kaufman, Dr. Liz Montemagny, Dr. Kim Nowakowski, Dr. 
Kathy Pappas, and Dr. Don Roberts. I extend a really special welcome to our esteemed faculty emeriti who are also joining us on the live stream. One of them was your, was your professor during your time here. Dr. David Miller, thank you for joining us, and Professor Deborah Pelletier. No department could ever function as smoothly as we do without one person who wears all the hats. Commencement caps, baseball caps. So I'm pleased to introduce our administrative associate, Cindy Moriarty. Cindy is our stage manager, artistic director, costume director, procurer of hoods, technical director, and marketing director for the program. For all the years that you've been here in your academic career, Cindy's been a source of emails, forms, goniometers, name tags, a shoulder to cry on, and a spot where you can pick up a piece of chocolate. I can't begin to list the ways she assists the faculty. We all owe her our thanks in helping these graduates reach this milestone. And finally, and most importantly, I want to acknowledge all the families and friends of the graduates who are here on live stream. Your support, your patience, your faith, and your love has helped them in ways that are truly immeasurable. You too are to be honored in this celebration. Of note, I know that this is a difficult time as we live through the pandemic, and we're so glad that you are able to join us in a virtual community at a time of physical distancing. This moment, we'd like to hold some space for those suffering and for those on the front lines of the pandemic. This may include you and your immediate family and other vulnerable communities near and around the world, and we hold them near and dear in our hearts. Members of the Doctor of Physical Therapy class of 2021, this afternoon is about you. You see it. We celebrate you and your achievements. 1,087 days ago, because we count, two years, 11 months, and 21 days, it was Wednesday, May 23rd, it was 2018, and you sat in the Health Science Center in 224 for your DPT orientation, trying to understand your new responsibilities. When I asked you to share two words that describe the physical therapist you aspire to become, the words repeated most frequently by your cohort were compassionate, Confident, dedicated, empathetic, understanding, and knowledgeable. That's what you said. Graduates, you've done it. In the days that have intervened since 2018, you've embraced an educational program and a profession with its own secret language, ice, sight, its culture and its duty to care. Over your three years in the program, you've shown incredible resilience and learned a tremendous amount of information about the human condition and about human movement and how humans are moved emotionally to overcome the challenges that bring them to the door of a physical therapist. You faced challenges we didn't even dream of when you first entered the program, and you handled more bumps in the road than any class before you. You are capable and you are ready to bring your spirit, your mind, and your body as a physical therapist for leadership and service to humanity. DPT class of 2021, trust me when I say that we faculty are very fond of you and very proud of you. Each one of you at some point in the past three years has probably ventured into our offices or met with us on a Zoom. Sometimes we talked about grades, sometimes about the funny adventures you've experienced, sometimes about your doubts as you progress through your studies and often about your aspirations and how to achieve them as you enter the profession of physical therapy. I know that in this class, in this cohort, there are 34 physical therapists who will commit themselves to care that is defined by its quality, by its collaborative nature, by its innovation, by its reliance on evidence, and by its patient centricity. Tomorrow, you are all going to add three new initials behind your name, DPT. And by the end of the summer, you're going to pass the hurdle of a somewhat big exam to add the legal designator of PT. That means that when summer ends, and even now, we're colleagues. You're no longer our students, you're my colleague. 
And as my colleague, I have some beliefs about you. I believe that each one of you is capable of providing care as a partner with our most important co collaborator, our patients. And that the care you will provide will be evidence informed with the goal of enabling people to achieve their highest possible outcomes. I believe you are each capable of leaving a lasting impact on our profession. And so I charge you to do it. And then I charge you to tell us about it. Let us know when you get your first position. Let us know when a patient says thank you for the first time. Let us know when your boss in that first job says good work. Let us know where your professional trajectory takes us. And remember that Springfield College is always a home for you. Make a point of running into us at professional meetings, at road races, in the case of Dr. Roberts, on vacations, Dr. Brooks does show up at the beach on occasion. Call us by phone, send us an email, tag us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or whatever means you use. The only way you could not meet our expectations is if you don't try and then you don't tell us about it. Please do both. Members of the faculty welcome you as our colleagues in the clinic. We who have worked closely with you and have watched you grow and mature over the course of the last three years offer you our sincerest good wishes and congratulations. Welcome to the hooding for the class of 2021. two students who are about to be inducted into the National Physical Therapy Student Honor Society. The National Physical Therapy Student Honor Society is an organization established by the American Council of Academic Physical Therapy to recognize DPT students who demonstrate excellence, integrity, and professionalism in areas of academic achievement, leadership, and service. Students inducted into the Honor Society are expected to uphold and implement the core values of the physical therapy profession. At this time, I would ask and would like to introduce you our two Honor Society inductees from the 2021 class, Andrew J. Hanks and Olivia R. Otter. Please come forward. Andrew and Olivia, congratulations on your entry into Delta Phi Tau, the National Physical Therapy Student Honor Society. You were nominated by the faculty as individuals who exemplify outstanding traits in leadership, research, and service to society, characterized by consistent demonstration of strong moral character and ethics. The purpose of Delta Phi Tau is to distinguish individuals who have demonstrated exceptional academic accomplishments and advocated for the profession of physical therapy. You both have set an example to the profession of exceptional academic accomplishment and our expectations of you are that you will continue to serve as an example and a mentor to future students. In honor of your induction into Delta Phi Tau Honor Society, you are each receiving an honor cord, which should be worn along with your hood to the commencement ceremonies and a certificate of recognition. Congratulations. At the end of each year, we typically give a number of awards, recognitions that are done by our department for people who have been exceptional in their service, in their research, and in some way touched physical therapy in Springfield College. I am very pleased to give our Gertrude M. Lamb Award this year, which is given in recognition of excellence in physical therapy as demonstrated in education, scholarly activity, and professional service. This award is named in memory of Gertrude Trudy Lamb. Trudy was one of the founding faculty members of this program and was the program's first academic coordinator of clinical education and, and was one of the founding members of the sports section of the American Physical Therapy Association. Trudy passed away in 2015, but her impact on this program and the profession is still felt daily. This year, we're twice as lucky. We have two LAM Award honorees, 
And in a moment, I'm going to invite them to the podium to offer their thoughts to our graduates. But first, let me tell you about them and their broad and impactful influence on our profession. Dr. Nanette Nan Highland. So Nan Highland is no stranger to this campus. Look closely at the wall of pictures on the second floor of the Health Science Building, and you'll find a young man in the photo from the MS in PT class of 1991. And graduates, please don't tell her whether you were born by then or not. She doesn't want to know. Her first clinical position was at Helen Hayes Hospital, where Nan distinguished herself through her care and her ability to mentor new physical therapists. At Helen Hayes, Nan quickly rose through the clinical and administrative ranks. In 1997, she joined the faculty at Mercy College, and in 2007, she became the program director of Mercy College's DPT program. On the side, she completed a PhD at Seton Hall, completed the ABTA Fellowship in Leadership, received a few grants, developed innovative interprofessional programming for education, and was heavily involved in the American Physical Therapy Association and the New York Physical Therapy Association. Her involvement in our profession touches on many areas. She's a delegate, a delegate to the APTA House of Delegates from New York. She's active in the New York PT Association, serving on task forces and committees. And she frequently volunteers for work in an association near and dear to my heart, the American Council of Academic Physical Therapy, developing models for the recognition of excellence and benchmarks for leadership development. Nan and my path cross often, and I can always count on Nan for a kind word, an acute and critical eye, and the ability to move our profession and academic physical therapy forward through her leadership and service. At the same time as we honor Nan, it turns out she's married to a physical therapist, Dr. Matt Highland. So while Nan was busy obtaining her professional degree at a premier institution, Springfield College, Matt was diligently pursuing his studies at another excellent institution, Ithaca College. Matt's first clinical position was at White Plains Hospital, but ever being an entrepreneur, in 1995, he went into private practice and built a thriving practice in upstate New York. Being a practice owner didn't keep Matt busy enough, so he too, with Nan, raised a family, got a PhD, and joined the faculty at Mercy College, keeping that private practice on the side. He worked with great verve on professional issues through his APTA involvement. He's the past president of the New York PT Association and a current member of the American Physical Therapy Association Board of Directors, serving as our vice president. During his time on the APTA board, he's chaired the Recruitment and Retention of Early Career Professionals Task Force, served on the Public Policy and Advocacy Committee, where we enjoyed many fine dinners, and the Ethics Judicial Committee. At this moment, Matt is one of the two nominees for president of the APTA. Keep an eye on him. Matt has also distinguished himself as a scholar with publications in the area of health services and physical therapy. Together, Matt and Nan have each received numerous awards and accolades, but I hope we're doing a first, and I hope that their joint receipt of this one is the first time they have to share the podium and share an award. And so I call them to the stage to provide a bit of inspiration about the future to us and to our graduates and congratulate them on their seat of the Golden Award. Matt and me. So the neat thing about live streaming is I get to do this. Hi, Mom, <laughs> who's watching from Florida. So good morning, graduates. Uh, it's really exciting to be here finally, not because we drove two hours today to get here, but in 1988, I applied to PT school here. In fact, it was my first choice. I, I got an interview and was waitlisted. So now 33 years later, I feel like I'm coming off the wait list. So it is truly an honor to receive the Trudy Lamb Award, um, one of which is a criteria as being a graduate. So I have a few more words to say to you, but I want to introduce or share with you uh, the graduate that inspires me and excites me um, and who is truly great. So my wife, Nan. So uh, 
thank you very much for this honor. Um, when Julia called, and actually she sent a, an email, I actually sent her back. I'm like, are you joking? And she's like, no, I'm not joking. And I am very honored. It is, you are setting a trend. Uh, not a trend, but uh, <laughs> but a, uh, it's the first time. We really appreciate this. So, yes, back in 1986, um, uh, that was two years before he applied. I think he just caught that. Um, I actually chose to come to a non-accredited Springfield College physical therapy program over Ithaca College, an accredited PT program. Those of you sitting uh, are going to be sitting very soon for your license exam, think about that. Non-accredited versus accredited. So why? Why did I choose Springfield? I can tell you right now, it was the educational philosophy of Springfield. The spirit, the humanics philosophy of education of the whole person in spirit, mind, and body. It talked to me, and I really felt that this was the place I wanted to go because I wanted to really live that, and I believed in that. Since I was in human high kids, actually one of my classmates. So we were in the early class, so Trudy was our professor. She was our director of clin ed, and because we were an early program, we didn't have all of the clinical affiliations that you guys have now. We were still paving our way, and back in the day, kind of like you have this proliferation of PT schools being developed, Springfield was considered one of the proliferations, and we were not loved out there in the real world. And then I come into the picture. I come from not in this region. I came from Western New York. And I remember my first meeting with Trudy, and she was like, huh, I don't know where to put you. I'm thinking, oh, that's not good. <laughs> so we, we met many times, um, and I challenged her because I really had a lot of thoughts and ideas, and she challenged me of, well, why do you want to do this, and why do you want to do that? So I'm really very honored um, to receive an award in her name. So I do have to say, Every single clinical affiliation I went to, the first day when you meet with your clinical coordinator, she would look at me, they were all she's back in the day, um, and she would say, well, you know, the only reason why we took you is because we love Trudy. And I would sit there and go, oh, <laughs> a little bit of pressure, but it was all good. So <clears throat> um, Trudy was so supportive of me supportive of uh, really helping me divide, develop my path and helping me land a job at Helen Hayes Hospital, which was a premier, uh, still a premier physical therapy rehabilitation hospital. So I find myself always drawn to education and service. I tell people one can never get bored with our profession. There's so many different avenues you can take. You guys will, you're just exploring. As you know, with all the clinical affiliates that you've been on, you've seen so many different avenues now, and there's even more out there for you to explore. Back when I was specializing in treating individuals who had sustained a spinal cord injury, I had started to really go to all of these orthopedic shoulder courses. And multiple times when I'm at these courses, the instructor would come up to me because we'd go around and say, where are you working? And everybody was an outpatient orthopedic doing something musculoskeletal at the time, and I was the one, oh, yeah, we're going to rehab hospital with patients with spinal cord injury, and the instructor would always go, well, what are you doing here? This is not a neuro class. I feel like we have come a long way. My response always to them were, they have shoulders too. I, our profession, for a while, really started to get very siloed, and when you think about the, philo the philosophical spirit, mind, body, treating the whole human being. How can we be siloed? You guys are going to go out there, and no matter what specialty you go into, I hope you continue to challenge your education in all the other areas because you're treating the whole body. You're treating every system, no matter who it is that you're treating. For the last 12 years, I have been the program director, as you've heard. And one of our main teaching tenets in our, in our program is to treat the human being, not the disability. It really is the philosophy that we bring to our students at Mercy College. Springfield's philosophy of spirit, mind, and body is the one that really drove me to that. It has always guided me in everything I do. So naturally, when I became the program director, I wanted to make sure that that humanistic approach and that tenet lived in our program's mission and our vision 
and everything we do when it comes to our teaching philosophy. Remember, you guys are very soon going to be alma maters here on Springfield College, that that spirit, mind, and body it will help you, guide you throughout your career and your life. It has guided me very well. The motto at the college I currently work is also consumed in service. So service is embedded into our program with the hope that it really becomes something that's natural, that when you get out there and you find that you're just, that administrative burden is so much, there's still that piece of you that wants to give back, wants to help. Service can be at multiple different levels. There's ways you're gonna to speak to your patients and advocate for your patients and do extra service for your patients. There's gonna be service opportunities where you work. There's definitely service opportunities in the community. As you know here, Springfield is so wonderful with that and working with the community. And then of course, there's service to the profession. Your faculty are exemplary models of service, education, and scholarship. I look at my newsletters all the time and I'm always very impressed with this group. So enough about me and my words. Uh, I have done service, as you've heard, at multiple different levels, and, and I'm always like the person behind the scene in a way. You don't have to be the four person. You don't have to be the chair person. You don't have to be the president to actually give service. But with that being said, I'm going to hand it back over to your current vice president of the American Physical Therapy Association, Matthew Hyland. I want to be a physical therapist. Words you've all spoken at some point, words that began your journey here today. A journey that probably started with a single thought or a belief. I want to help someone, help people get better, and change their lives. And I'm here today to not only celebrate you, and this is a celebration of you, with your families and your friends, but to challenge you. You want to be a physical therapist? Be a great one. Transforming society by optimizing you to improve the human experience. The vision statement of our profession, your profession, powerful words. And what a fantastic opportunity. This is at the core of who we are and what we do. We're experts in movement across the lifespan and we change lives. Always remember, we treat people, not pathologists. It's been moving to hear those words already many times today. Your focus must always be on the human being first. That's what we can do as physical therapists, what you should aspire to do in being great. So why do I challenge you to be great? Because we, our profession, needs you to be. Our healthcare system needs you to be, and most importantly, society needs you to be. But I have to warn you, being great isn't the easy path. Okay, let's get one thing out in the open. Physical therapy school is really hard and you did it during the pandemic. So let's give yourselves a hand. So now here you are at a very exciting, and maybe even a little scary place on your path, graduation. You have the opportunity now to truly change lives. Your patients will be entrusting you with their health, with their bodies. The human experience is really a strong thing. Embrace it and always see the human being first. Individuals' patients' needs must be at the center of decision-making, and it takes great healthcare practitioners to continue to force that single necessity. So again, be great. You're the future of our awesome profession and the leaders that are going to guide us. It may be hard to believe now, but I have no doubt that future district chairs, chapter presidents, APTA board members are sitting here right now. Don't ever forget the excitement and the passion that you feel today in the choice you made to become a physical therapist. To our very, very soon to be physical therapists here today, you have the opportunity to shape our profession for decades to come. Seize that opportunity, foster and embrace change. Lead us. I wanna be a physical therapist. I challenge you again to be a great one. We have a lot of good physical therapists in our profession, but that's not the bar we need to set to transform society through movement to improve the human experience. We need great physical therapists. We need great physical therapists in clinical practice, positively changing the lives of patients. We need great physical therapists in academia, such as here at Springfield College, 
modeling the way for our future clinicians. We need great physical therapists and research to provide the evidence to elevate our profession and meet our patients' needs while changing the landscape of payment. We need great physical therapists serving our association, being bold in the vision, put society first. And we need great physical therapists advocating for what's right. So Nan and I have two young adult children, James and Kelly, and they were young when they were young. I would read to them a lot. And one of their favorite stories, or maybe my favorite story, was Alice in Wonderland. And my favorite scene of the entire movie or the book at the time was when Alice arrives in Wonderland and happens across the Cheshire Cat. Alice asked the cat, excuse me, sir, could you please tell me which way I ought to go? To which the cat replied, that depends a great deal on where you want to get to. I don't care much where, said Alice. To which the cat retorted, and it doesn't matter which way you go. To be great, you must know which way you want to go. And that's why you're here today. Because at some point you all said, I want to be a physical therapist. That means changing the lives of our patients, our communities, and our society. You must be the change agents to shepherd us into the future. Because our direction is clear. So be great. Springfield College has prepared you for greatness through the humanistic approach educating you in mind, body, and spirit. So thank you for sharing your day with us. It's been truly special. Mary McMillan, the mother of physical therapy, once said, progress is a relay race passing the baton one generation at a time. I want to be a physical therapist. My new friends, colleagues, this afternoon that baton is now being firmly pressed into your hands as you continue your journey, and it's time for you to start running. Go transform society through movement to improve the human experience and be great. Thank you. Thank you, Matt and, and Nan. That was really, really well done. Uh, each graduating class has an opportunity to recognize a peer who has made contributions to the class and to the college. A student is selected. The student selected is described as someone who is dedicated and enthusiastic about the field of physical therapy, who exemplifies the humanics philosophy, and who supports their learning community in ways that can't be articulated in words. This year, the DPT class of 2021 chose to recognize and honor Zach Varnauskas. Zach? Zach, Zach exudes a love of humanics. He excelled in his clinical placements, he's been involved in campus activities, and he's one of the strongest volunteers and advocates for Habitat for Humanity, participating in builds across the country, locally in North Carolina and Florida. Congratulations, Zach. So, finally, we now come to the hooding. This is the moment that you've been waiting for, the hooding ceremony for the class of 2021. The doctoral hood is a special part of traditional academic regalia. It denotes scholarly and professional achievements of the highest order. The colors of the hood signify the institution and the discipline of study. In this case, the maroon silk lining represents Springfield College and the teal velvet represents the discipline of physical therapy. The honor of hooding is given to department faculty in recognition of their role in preparing the graduates. As the candidates' names are called by Dr. Kim Nowakowski, 
they will walk forward to be hooded by two members of our faculty. Once all members of the class have been hooded, we will take a moment to ring our bells to cheer and acknowledge all of the graduates and their accomplishments. Graduates, if you could come forward, Milkowski and faculty. Hooded by faculty mentors, Dr. Aaron Futrell and Dr. Don Roberts. Kelly I. Arbor. <clears throat> Griffin M. Bennett. Jennifer J. Bergeron. Joshua B. Capello. Fletcher N. Comet. <clears throat> Taylor L. Field. Taylor E. Fulcrud. Sydney A. Fournier. Ashlyn M. Gallo. Hooded by mentors Dr. Sal Brooks and Dr. Liz Montemagni. Robert M. Gaston. Benjamin J. Gatlin. Bailey J. Hansel. Andrew J. Hanks. Ryan J. Hardy. <clears throat> J. 
Jeffrey R. Pulse. Isabella R. Inglesi. Daryl G. Gent, Jr. by faculty mentors Dr. Regina Kaufman and Dr. Kathy Pappas. Kelsey R. Kremenick. Kayla M. Lachance. Morgan O. Lemke. Danielle S. Levine. Hope W. McDonald. Marissa E. Moquin. <laughs> Elena C. Murphy. Kelsey P. Orpin. <laughs> Olivia R. Otter. by faculty mentors Dr. Angela Campbell and Dr. Maureen Barrett. Melissa M. Parrish. Emma R. Peters. <laughs> Olivia A. Seely. Serpa. Alice 
Nelson N. Skinner. Allison P. Tupai. Zachary J. Barnauskas. Marissa K. Wachowski. The Hooded DPT Cohort of 2021. Congratulations. The DPT 2021 cohort has selected two students who will now step forward to be the student speakers for this class, Ashlyn Gell and Drew Hanks, if you would come up. <laughs> Ashlyn and Drew have been leaders in their cohort in so many different ways, but today they're going to join their voices, sharing a message about and by their Good morning, everyone. So we would like to start by thanking those that are in attendance today, both in person and virtually, because honestly, we would not be sitting right here if it wasn't for the support of our professors, our families, our classmates, and everyone else who helped us out along the way. It's been almost exactly three years, as Dr. Shevin was saying, since the day that we gathered in the student union, wearing our professional attire for the very first time to receive our name tags and officially kick off what has been an incredible journey. For those three years, we took great pride in wearing those name tags. We embraced the beliefs and the values of the program that that small piece of plastic represents and will continue to do so through our professional and personal lives. Now, we get to retire those name tags inscribed with SPT after our names and start wearing once with the updated initials that we've worked so hard to earn. Something I failed to realize or more likely just chose to ignore at the time, is that the initials aren't the only thing that's gonna be changing. They won't all be maroon with the white lettering. They won't all say Springfield College at the top. I suppose it's time to accept the fact that after tomorrow, we will all be going our separate ways. And while our name tags may be changing, one thing that will never change is the bond that we have with each other. The convocation ceremony was certainly a scary day for most of us. We were entering a whole new world with a group of students that we truthfully didn't know too much about, but quickly we came to realize that we were all extremely lucky to have each other. Our class has had a strong bond since that first year, and yes, maybe it's because we spend at least 10 hours a day together for two years straight at this point, but I think that it's also because we were each other's biggest supporters, from late night study sessions to preparing for cipher practicals, but also unwinding after a long week. There's no way that we could have done it alone. I wouldn't have wanted to be on this journey without all of you beside me because it truthfully wouldn't have been as enjoyable. And there were many, many laughs, but also many moments where we held up those who needed it or worked together as a team to problem solve. And we will always be a team, whether we're on this campus or not. And I do know that Ashlyn is right. I think we proved that. Uh, we've been a pretty good team since COVID kicked us off campus at the end of last year. Um, it was actually Friday the 13th in March of 2020 the, the day before spring break that we would not end up returning from uh, until today. It's been over 400 days since many of us have seen each other in person, and we have grown so much during that time. Uh, Zoom classes were definitely a new challenge, uh, especially when you couldn't walk through the library the night before because you know exactly where everyone was sitting. Um, 
We did ad adapt to the online lectures and exams. We finished our research way ahead of schedule, um, and we had full confidence that we help, uh, we'd be able to help each other through whatever likes to call the unprecedented times. Um, I don't think any of us were ready to walk out of that health science center without knowing when or if we'd be coming back. Uh, that building is our home away from home, and it's the people inside that made it so special. Maybe that's why Zoom classes didn't feel quite like home. Yes, we did get to see all of Dr. Campbell's pets, but Dr. Brooks' laugh is not quite the same through the computer, and we couldn't smell the anatomy lab. We owe so much of our growth to the professors who helped guide us. Without them and their constant support, I probably wouldn't have survived the first sight, never mind five of them. They dedicated endless time to us for anything and everything that we could have needed, and the saying, there are no dumb questions, was certainly tested. However, they always help shape us into the professionals that we are today. We have so many of their life lessons and their morals engraved into us, whether we like it or not. We're truly lucky to have had such extraordinary faculty supporting us over these past years, and I speak for all of us when I say that we cannot thank you enough for all that you've done for us. And their support did not end after our time on campus did when we transitioned to full-time clinicals. We went out into the clinics for the very first time in the middle of a global pandemic, and we came out stronger than ever. We learned to be resilient, and we learned that we were capable of much more than we think. And today, we were able to reflect as a group on who we are today and see the vast growth that we've achieved since the first day that we received those name tags. I know that for many of us, this is an exciting time, but also a scary time. We're going out into the world of physical therapy as doctors. Yes, doctors of physical therapy. It's a lot to live up to, and there's certainly a lot of responsibility. But I have no doubt that all of us are going to not only achieve great things, but also excel at what we do. We are going to soon be Springfield College graduates, which already sets us up for success. Remember, we have the opportunity as new PTs to change our patients' lives. We are now their provider, and that's no small feat. Our patients will come to us with limitations, and we'll have the absolute privilege of getting them back to do the things that they love to do. And if you ask me, there's no better feeling in the world. So never stop pushing yourself to grow and learn. Never stop setting goals for yourself to become the best physical therapist that you can be. Never lower the bar and always continue to challenge yourself. But lastly, never hesitate to lean on your peers. We will always be each other's support system for anything that comes up even after we graduate. And many of you may be thinking that this is the end of your education, but really it's the opposite and this is just the beginning. We undoubtedly have a very exciting future ahead of us and there are so many bright things to come, but I think I speak for all of us when I say that we will never forget our roots here at Springfield. I would like to wish all of you the absolute best in every aspect of your future as a physical therapist, but also in life itself. I will truthfully miss all the long nights spent in the Health Science Center, um, the pre-site jitters in the lobby, the post-site celebrations, uh, the late nights in the library, and all the fun that we had in between, either celebrating birthdays, uh, having Thanksgiving potlucks, or the Christmas ham. Um, most importantly, I'm going to miss all of you. Uh, we're not just classmates in a cohort, we're much more than that. I uh, think of you guys as my family, and I know that will never change. So thank you to our families and our friends for supporting us and allowing us to follow our dreams. Thank you to the faculty for always giving us your best and shaping us to be the best future PTs that we can be. And thank you to Springfield College for giving us the best classmates and friends that we could have ever hoped for and for memories that will last a lifetime. To the class of 2021 before us, step into your new professional role as a clinician with knowledge, compassion, determination, and greatness. Each and every one of you has the capability to do incredible things in your new journey. Live your life to the fullest and fill it with happiness and purpose. So we wanted to end our speech by just saying one more thing. Congratulations to the DPT class of 2021. We finally did it. On behalf of our entire community, I congratulate and I commend you. I trust you leave here with a deep appreciation of your time at Springfield College, an awareness that your academic experience in the DPT program is only the start of your learning, and 
and a strong commitment to the profession and the populations we serve. I want to thank the graduates and those who are here to bear witness to the entry of these 34 men and women into the profession of physical therapy. This concludes our celebration. I want to thank everyone who was a part of the ceremony. Let the celebrations ring out in your houses and in your communities. And for our graduates and our guests, we're going to retire to the back lawn for a reception. Thank you very much.